We all know there are many great software engineers out there in the world, but do you know what most of us have in common? We all likely started out with the same dang program, Hello World, and yet, I bet you have no idea its origin. The Hello World program has been written in over 600 computer programming languages, including the language Emoji Code, where the instructions are all built from emojis, Piet, where the code comes from colored pixels, and in a language called Folders, where yes, the source code is entirely made up by the folder structure and their names but more on those later. When many of us wrote this first program of ours, Hello World, we did not understand computers, compiling, and really we did not understand many of the strange arrangements of symbols on our document of text and our programming language that we were learning. But after executing the program, we were greeted by a friendly message from the digital machine, indicating to us that we had successfully breathed our own breath of life into the machine before us. So just like we all have a small relation to each other via all writing that same Hello World program, we are all gathered here today Wondering, something like, but what language was the first Hello World written in? When was it first written? And by whom? So let's cut to the chase and get you an answer before any of you guys leave this video and hurt the watch time, you know. Gotta satisfy the oh-so-important YouTube algorithm, which is a bit more complex than any old Hello World program, sadly. The Hello World program was first written in 1972 at Bell Labs. The laboratory was responsible for other things, like the first television images that were successfully transmitted over a long distance. This was also where the transistor was invented, where the C programming language was created, and where the revolutionary operating system Unix was developed. Brian Kernighan was one of these scientists at Bell Labs, and he was the creator of the Hello World program. And to answer the question of which language it was first written in, it was B, a predecessor to C, in a book called A Tutorial Introduction to the Language, you guessed it, B. A phrase was needed to demonstrate how with long enough strings, you might need to piece together several variables. As a simple word like hi or earth could be stored in a single 8-bit variable, longer phrases would need multiple of these 8-bit variables, and the chosen phrase was hello world. Something similar was previously written in a book called My Computer Likes Me When I Speak in Basic, which taught, you guessed it, basic. And the simple startup program for this language was to say, my human understands. Brian Kernighan is not quite sure why he chose the words hello world, but he has said the following regarding the phrase. What I do remember is that I had seen a cartoon that showed an egg and a chick, and the chick was saying, Hello world. So, like I said, the first use of Hello world was in a tutorial about B, and to no one's surprise, the next usage was in another Bell Labs internal tutorial piece on the C programming language called Programming in C, a tutorial. So if you caught that, these tutorials for B and C were written for internal usage teachings of Bell Labs members only. So it wasn't actually until significantly later, when the C programming language was published in 1978, that the popular phrase, hello world, started catching on as an example starting program for programmers across the world. Interestingly, if you research the question, who first wrote hello world, on the internet, you might find some people claiming that it was first written within the documentation for BCPL, or Basic Combined Programming Language. This would mean that the hello world program was written for BCPL first and not B, but this is simply false. The credit for discrediting this goes to Azaner Hansha, who emailed Professor Kernighan, and he said the following. I have never written a line of BCPL, so I definitely never wrote a Hello World example for the BCPL documentation. As best I can recall, the original example was for the internal B manual that I wrote at Bell Labs. I find it pretty funny that the correct answer was that it was first written for B, and then somebody gets it wrong and just makes a whole, you know, confident post saying it was written for BCPL, and it gets all these upvotes on, you know, Stack Overflow, goes unanswered, you know, or not unanswered, but it goes answered incorrectly like that. You know, it's just funny. Like, I bet the person didn't have bad intentions, but you just got to wonder, how does this stuff happen? And who knows how many other bad, wrong technical answers are creeping around the internet, waiting to strike and cause a bug in someone's code. I thought I would show you guys this collection on the helloworldcollection.de that lets you browse 603 Hello World programming examples in 603 different programming languages. So the Hello World collection is still updated to this day, but the original collection began in 1994 inside of a simple text file. And then in 1999, the first known instance of the first list being on the website is published to a private homepage. Here we can see this awesome Twitter page that they run um, where they infrequently post some interesting Hello World examples and the users that submitted them. Pretty fun to browse sometime. I recommend you guys check this out. A couple things I found interesting relating to the Hello World program, or even just honestly the dang two words, Hello World. Uh, first thing here, we got a PlayStation Portable PSP. And you see Hello World Red, Hello World Green, and Hello World Blue. We can assume somebody hacked in here, got some code running on this computer. Yes, a PlayStation Portable, Xbox, P3, 
PSP, whatever. They're all computers through and through, just running a different operating system from what you normally think. So obviously they can run code and show whatever sort of text you might want, but pretty neat to assume somebody hacked in here and got this showing up. Um, next year, we got a little Nutella ad, not sponsored by Nutella, would love to be, decent product. Do you spy the, the Hello World Easter egg? Yes, for some reason they've decided to put Hello World on the Nutella ad. I don't really think this relates to the programming thing, but it's, you know, hard, you know, maybe they wouldn't have thought about it if Hello World didn't have all this recognition as a popular programming start thing. You never know. Maybe the advertising intern that thought of this had been doing some coding on the side, ready to switch jobs. Uh, and then here we've got, uh, I don't know if the camera will really pick this up, but basically it's like a framed image of the original Hello World program written in C that's missing the int main and return zero, you might expect, but for this architecture back then it would have worked just fine. Yeah, pretty neat. This would be cool to have framed and like put in the room, although I don't know, it's like only a few people would really notice it. If you, if you don't know what it is and you saw this hanging up in someone's room, uh, you'd probably just be like, this just like a piece of paper or some writing on it. So it would really only be a cool Easter egg if people knew. So maybe, you know, if you have like a tech job or something and, you know, you want to have it in your office at work, um, it would be awesome to have it actually signed by signed by Brian Kernigan, not him. I'm being an idiot here and I did not realize I had not yet mentioned that not only is this the original Hello World program, but it is signed by the, of course, original guy that wrote the Hello World program, Brian Kernigan. Awesome dude. Awesome signature, that was the focus of this, but I got distracted by the fact that it was missing the int main and return zero and decided to talk about that instead. I'm not just like a copy, but pretty neat here. Uh, this is a, you know, cute little baby. Got a nice, nice little Python shirt. Class Sophia, assume that's the baby. Got mom.jeans, dad.jeans, blah, blah, blah. Pretty neat little outfit. We can assume on the on the back there's probably a poop and pee function. You know, how's it gonna work without that? Ha ha. About to name my kid, hello world, or name him world, so. When they come out, I can say, hello, world. And uh, next up here, we got guys got a tattoo. Hello, world, tattooed on his arm. My instinct says, ooh, no, another guy with a, with a tattoo he's gonna regret. But I mean, people get a lot worse tattooed on themselves. I think this is a pretty neat tattoo. I would have preferred to have some binary around it rather than these random cubes. Kind of looks like a blockchain Bitcoin ad or Ethereum ad, you know, on his arm. But I do like the hello, world idea. And I don't think this is a tattoo you're gonna regret. I think it'll age pretty well. Cube drone, pretty cool tattoo there. I like it. Uh, and then lastly here, we got Jen Schiffer with a joke. She says, somebody says, what five words best describe programming? And she says, the world never says hello back. Pretty funny. You know, you say hello world and the world says nothing. You know, the world never says hello back. Haha, <laughs> Jen. Pretty funny. I don't exactly get though how this relates to, you know, best describe programming itself, but Jen didn't ask me to come in and rip apart her joke, so I, I won't go too far on it. And, you know, of course, a thousand other people thought it was pretty funny. Um, anyways, good joke, Jen. We like it. World never says hello back. As I'm sure we're all aware, the line Hello World has been printed many, many times from so many friendly computers saying hello to their programmer. So next time, how about you say hello back to your trusty machine? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next gate.